Hello and welcome to this Southern View election special coming to you live from the beautiful, cool, cool Coimbatore city. We are here at the race course road. Evening walkers all out there. Beautiful city, hot, hot summer, but Coimbatore remains cool and pleasant in the evenings as well. Warm by Coimbatore standards, but it's cool to be in. It's a city I'd love to live in, but uh, the political temperature here, the battle for Coimbatore is heating up. The big question, can the BJP state president K. Anamalai breach the Dravidian frontiers or is it all just hype and is the battle between the DMK and the AIA DMK? That's the big question Coimbatore will answer. It's had a fascinating history in terms of elections and AIA DMK stronghold once was won by the communists last time. This time you've got a tri three way battle between the BJP, AIA DMK, and the DMK. I met with all three candidates K. Anamalai, as well as Ganapati Rajkumar of the DMK, a former mayor. And remember, there are two IIM alumni in this race. The other one is Singai Ramachandran of the AIA DMK, the candidate who is an IIM Ahmedabad alumnus. Anamalai, of course, I am Lucknow. So, fascinating battle here in Coimbatore for the political space. Uh, let's begin with a conversation I had with K. Anamalai on his campaign trail. As a mistake or or something that went wrong that you parted ways with the AIDMK, you think it's still it was still the right strategy to be fight this election alone? This is a very important journey for BJP Tamil Nadu, sir. Very important trajectory for BJP Tamil Nadu. Because the mood in the ground, Modiji's ten years, Modiji's image in Tamil Nadu, the kind of hard work the party has put in. And we are standing in 19 uh, seats now, which is the highest for the party, which was standing five seats and seven seats in previous elections. And the four seats our symbols are contesting. Alliance leaders who contested previously in uh, ADMK symbol, they are contesting in BJP symbol this time. So up to 23. So this is a great thing for the party. The party is growing, the party is expanding, the party is doing election out to the ground. So it is not that we decided that this is the path to go. The nature and a combination of other factors decided this is the path to go. So right now we are in an extremely good position. Okay, uh, the DMK and your critics would say that this is just a media creation. Their argument is that Anamalai phenomenon is a media creation. How do you respond to them? Sir, I understand sir, everybody can have their uh, uh, you know, freedom to have their own opinion. So election matters, election results matters, numbers matter. So June 4 is the only time I can answer. When, you, when, when, when everybody looks at June 4, they will look at the party's increased numbers, increased vote share, conversion to seats, everything June 4. I can say all kinds of things. But to convince the critic, it is not my job to convince the critic also, but to genuinely tell the critic, look, you are mistaken or probably you are living in a fool's paradise or you are still living in the 1980s era and June 4th will be the answer. Okay, uh, you know, given the given the fact how this campaign has played out, you know, you went on a Padayatra, your initial focus issues were that of corruption and family rule against the DMK administration. It gets diluted in an ideological confrontation. Do you believe that the, what are the core issues in this election for the BJP? It, is it one of ideology and an ideological confrontation with the DMK or is it one of bread and butter issues of the people? Sir, every election is different. This is an election where BJP is in power for 10 years. We are asking for 5 more years. So, context is different. DMK is in power for 33 months. The context is different. So, here, it is going to be a referendum of how DMK has performed over the last 33 months and also how over the last 10 years we have performed. So, this election is all about our developmental model, our vision for the next 5 years, what we are setting up. And also the misrule of DMK for the last 33 months. So these are the two main things. Of course, corruption is a factor because Tamil Nadu last 33 months, BJP Tamil Nadu, we have taken corruption in a big way. Of course, dynastic politics is a big factor. Otherwise, other things are chota mota ones. There are small things that in a garland, the small flowers that come here and there. So development, next five years vision, corruption, dynastic politics, our 10 years referendum and DMK 33 months. Last couple of questions. Is Anamalai nervous? Has he been hyped too much? Are you worried that there is too much expectation on you? Expectation is always good, sir. Uh, expectation is always good and for the Tamil Nadu BJP, I always believe it is now or never. This is the time for the party to grow. You miss this opportunity, you might not be sure when you will get the opportunity again next because there is a leadership wake up and there is Modiji at the top. 
and there is 10 years of stable government and there is misrule in the state. If the BJP is not capitalizing on this opportunity, what opportunity is going to come to you in a plate, sir? Mm. Honest answer, what is it that you would expect at the, on, on the 4th of June? Uh, what kind of numbers do you expect both in terms of seat share as well as in terms of seats? Vote share, I am being very open for the last many months, we would touch 25%. It will be historic, people might not believe now, but the, I'm, we are reading the ground well. The mood is very, very positive. We should touch 25%, which is a very big number, I, I agree, but we will get there. In terms of seats, I don't want to get into the numbers game. Every seat is important. All 39 is important. Alliance leaders are there. As of now, the media is projecting 8 seats, 12 seats, whatever they project. But seats will be a historic number, a good number, a double-digit seat we will get. So that was Anamalai there. He says 25% vote share, which the Dravidian parties refuse to believe. They believe the battle is firmly between the DMK and the AIA-DMK. Remember, historically, the BJP has not been able to win a seat on its own, and it's often had to piggyback. Whenever it has had numbers from Tamil Nadu, it's been at the back of allies. In 2019, it was... Uh, along with the AIA DMK. In 2014, it had DMDK, PMK and other parties together as part of an alliance and has got about 30% plus vote share both in 2014 and 2019 here in Coimbatore. But this time around, the DMK has taken this up as a prestige battle. A former AIA DMK man who shifted over to the DMK a few years ago uh, former mayor of Coimbatore, Ganapati Rajkumar, is the DMK's candidate and the state government is putting its might with the industries minister camping here in Coimbatore behind Ganapati Rajkumar, also with help of the allies as well. So, Ganapati Rajkumar on his campaign trail categorically says that there are other issues like GST and the DMK's campaign against the centre that's going to be the winner in these elections. Let's listen in. Are you worried about the BJP's threat this time? Because a lot has been spoken in the national media about Anna Malai and the power of Anna Malai in these areas. No, we are not at all worried. They are very strong in the social media. But otherwise, we are very strong party structure-wise. And the welfare schemes of the Tamil Nadu chief minister has reached the root level. So we are confident. We are not worried about any threats. There is no threat at all. Okay, traditionally, you know, Coimbatore has been seen as, at least Western Tamil Nadu has been seen as a weak link for the DMK. This has been a communist seat uh, erstwhile, this one. You have yourself been with the AIA DMK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there a sense, because, you know, this is one seat where 2014 and 2019, the BJP has got 30% odd vote shares. That, uh, Does that... It, it, it is a myth that uh, DMK is not strong. Last uh, local body elections, we won 96 seats. That is 96 percentage of that seats. So we are strong naturally. That's going to happen this time also. BJP will be routed again in Tamil Nadu. Okay, but in terms of specifics in these elections, what is the defining theme here? Is it caste? Is it the arithmetic? Is it the conglomeration of vote bases? What is the core issue as far as Western Tamil Nadu is concerned? The core issue is GST. The hero of this election is GST. Because of GST, uh, what to say, uh, once the Manchester of South India, that was uh, Coimbatore was called, is slowly crippling. So that is the main reason why people are opting for DMK. Actually, they want something uh, let out from GST. That is the reason. You don't see the Prime Minister's repeated campaigns. He's likely to campaign in Coimbatore again, you know, in Tamil Nadu, special focus. You don't see that making an impact, making inroads. Uh, they already had a vote share in the past year. You don't see them going past the post with a little push because of all the campaigning? No, we don't see that as a threat. No, it doesn't make any impact. Prime Minister's visit doesn't make any impact in uh, Coimbatore. Why is that? Uh, people uh, do not accept uh, BJP. BJP doesn't fit into Tamil Nadu, especially Coimbatore. We are peace lovers. We don't uh, follow Hindutva. We are support, that is, we protect uh, uh, minority people. We protect all the people here. So we are very peaceful. We are peace loving people. So Hindutva concept will not take off in Tamil Nadu, especially in Coimbatore.
It's not often that you find the DMK and the AIDMK agree upon something, but the one thing that both the AIDMK candidate and the DMK candidate in Coimbatore seem to agree upon is that they are rivals to each other and not Annamalai. He's, they say, distant third. But uh, as I mentioned at the start, Annamalai is not the only IIM alumnus here in the race. The AIADMK Singai Ramachandran is an IIM Ahmedabad alumnus and he says he's confident of a victory. Listen in. What's the sense you're picking up in terms of Coimbatore? The fact that Annamalai has become the center of the media attention in terms of it. Do you believe that the old narrative of DMK, ADMK is under deep threat here in Coimbatore? He is, you are saying he is the center of media attention. I am saying uh, we are the center of people's attention. Because we are in the ground, we are with people. And day by day, we can see people are giving overwhelming response to us. You know, AIDMK has fielded a lot of new candidates this time. Some see this as a reflection that the party is not taking the Lok Sabha elections very seriously and is more focused on an assembly election. Is that true? Is there, is, has the AIDMK really putting up a very strong fight in Tamil Nadu to hold its space? From the time the party was started, from 1972, Every election, if you look at it, AADMK is the only party which will give opportunity to youngsters. That's how it has been, the track record. And that is why a lot of youngsters come to AADMK and they say anybody can become an MLA, anybody can become an MP. Just with my hard work and education, I was given a ticket to contest. A three-way fight, don't you, isn't, is there a worry that the AADMK may concede more space uh, for any party to rise, uh, the DMK holds its base and the AIDMK's vote base could get fragmented? In social media it might look like a three-way fight, but on ground it is a two-way fight. We are fighting head on head against DMK and uh, let's see uh, how, which position is BJP getting. <laughs> the DMK is also putting up a strong fight here with the industries minister camping here in charge of this place. Uh, uh, you know, uh, does the AIDMK have it in it to take on the DMK's might? See, what is the point in industry ministry, uh, minister campaigning here right now? For the past three years, the people of Coimbatore are going and industrialists here and all small, small and medium scale industries, everybody, they're going and representing to them saying this EB price rise is spoiling and killing our industry. They have not even moved their little finger. Suddenly, industry minister coming here and doing all this drama is not going to make any change. Is the AIDMK standless in this election? We don't know where the AIDMK is. Is it a supporter of the BJP or is it against the BJP in the national divide? Let's look at 2014 election. We contested alone and we won. But then you had and... Madam Jaya Lalita as the one in charge. Now we have her blessings and we have Anna Nedapadir because even when Amma, Honorable Amma was there uh, in 2000. Six elections, I believe. We got only 63 tickets after five years of anti incumbency. After that, now in 2021, after ruling for 10 years, we have got 66 seats, which means we have her blessings. And Eda Padia also proved he is also a capable leader. So, those are the three voices from the campaign trail. But how do you deal with the heat? And that's a problem that everybody has. This morning, when I was on the campaign trail with Annamalai, he stopped by for pananir or something non-alcoholic toddy, uh, you know, which is a farm drink that we stopped by and had on this roadside. And while we were having pananir, we discussed the issue of Kachativu and whether the BJP is politicizing a geopolitically sensitive international issue. While uh, we'll play those pictures for you of Annamalai's uh, roadshow right now coming in live, let's cut to that conversation I had with Anamalai over some panini. Kachati was a very important issue because uh, the Honorable Chief Minister, the Honorable Chief Minister in the month of February, when he was in Ramanathaburam for a fisherman's conference, he made a direct frontal attack on the central government, saying that I have written 21 letters, retrieving Kachativu, my father was not consulted, the government of India just threw it away and everything. He was trying to set a political narrative. So it made us thinking we wanted to go to the root of it. The whole idea is to bring 
the truth to the Tamil Nadu public to say DMK is hand in glove in giving it. Right now they are putting a drama for the last 50 years saying we don't have anything to do with respect to how Kachathi was gifted. Now our intention is not to politicize this. Our intention is to solve the Tamil fisherman issue. Every week somebody getting arrested, we make efforts to bring them back. In that, the context and the truth is very important. What actually happened in 1974? That is the reason. Now, how long will it take? We have been very vocal for the last one year. That Kachathivu, we have to get it back. Or at least minimum Article 6 has to be reinstated. The original agreement, which gave a right to the Tamil fisherman to go till Kachathivu, put his fishing nets and again come back in the evening. That expanded India's border. Now, after Kachathivu, India's border is shrunk. Now, that is creating all host of problems. No, but uh, what were the what, the question that's being raised by the DMK is what was the BJP doing the last 10 years? Why raise it now on election season? You're right, sir. We are not raising it in the election season. If BJP, one year back we met the external affairs minister Jay Shankar. I met with the party delegation along with Punar, Punradha Krishnanji. We formed a committee. We met all the fishermen. The report was submitted one year back to Jay Shankarji with the recommendation by BJP Tamil Nadu we should take Achatiwu back. So I am being very vociferously and consistently talking with respect to government of India. You know, it's a very sensitive issue. Yeah. When Jay Shankarji spoke to the press people, that all options on the table. In a sensitive issue, I don't want to politicize the government of India stand. As a party, we are in the front saying Kachati has to come back. Now the time frame, the modalities, the government of India, let us wait for the government of India to respond. But is it not, uh, you know, politicizing a diplomatic issue which is sensitive internationally? There is a dimension that is there, national security dimension, global strategic dimension. You Aren't you politicizing something for electoral gains in Tamil Nadu in election season? We are not politicizing it, sir. We are only telling the truth. <laughs> DMK for the last 50 years, they said... They got nothing to do with the way Kachati was gifted. Sir, please, please drink it. Nothing to do with the way Kachati was gifted. Right now, all we are putting out before the people of Tamil Nadu is to say, look, they are hand in glove. Let us solve the problem. To solve the fisherman problem, sir, without the redrawing of the maritime boundary, at least near the Kachati, there is no way you are going to solve the Indian fisherman issue. No way you are going to solve it. Okay, we will enjoy this drink now for the moment. Well, that was Anna Malai on the issue of Kachativu. Remember, a contentious issue, but uh, there's another big face here in Coimbatore, and that's Tamil Nadu's Industries Minister. Given the focus of the SMEs and the economy in Coimbatore around industry, Tamil Nadu's Industries Minister TRB Raja has been camping here and has been put as the minister in charge to front the DMK's campaign here. Well, it shows how the DMK sees this as a prestige battle and a must-win battle. I caught up with TRB Raja and I began by asking him something about a cricket stadium for Coimbatore. Are you worried that Annamalai or Singai Ramachandran may hit the ball out of the park? No, no, I'm just worried for the opposition for CSK, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in terms of seriousness, in terms of the, uh, the election campaign here, Tamil Nadu has been a DMK, AI, DMK narrative and this time uh, there's been an enormous push from the BJP in terms of wanting to break through in the state, especially Coimbatore where you have Anamalai contesting. Is, does that worry you? Is, that, is there a concern that the narratives may change here? If you actually take some time to step out of the uh, media room from, from Delhi, if all, all your friends in Delhi step out of the media rooms there and try and go into the uh, locales here, there are about 2,048 booths, 2,059 booths actually. I'll give you 2,000 booths for you to go and uh, check. Just ask if people know him there. So you're saying he is unknown in booths, even many, in booths in the street? Many booths. They, uh, they know that uh, the BJP has been lying their way uh, into, into uh, Tamil Nadu and they just don't care. You don't see the Prime Minister's push here which making a difference? Did you see the roadshow that the Prime Minister did? He had to bring in all the North Indian crowd, the migrant labor here, to come and fill that crowd. Doesn't that sound wrong? If they had any strength at all, do you think you would have seen some more um, Tamil faces uh, during the roadshow? And actually, you probably saw more road than people there. There's an atmosphere of political confrontation, it's clear. But from an industry point of view, center state battles can be extremely worrisome. Uh, who's, the onus is on who to ensure that the system works 
together? And I mean, you know, from an industry point of view, is that a concern that's often raised? If you think deeply, the onus is on the voter, first of all, to make sure that they choose a government which, which works um, for the people and not in the interest of, interest of any party specifically. Uh, if you look at uh, the DMK, we've been doing that for, for ages now. And that's why you see uh, a brilliant, brilliant um, governance in place. It's called the Dravidian model of governance where we put people first. This center state issue from an industry point of view, is that an emerging concern that's been expressed? Is there a need to perhaps put politics aside and work together, uh, which, 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 will have to, which will have to be the only way forward? Absolutely. I, I, I think um, that is the right thing to do for India. Tamil Nadu, here in Tamil Nadu, we believe that a strong India uh, is extremely key for a, a vibrant Tamil Nadu. Right? Tamil Nadu, is, we are sure, is, is the engine that is driving the, 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 the growth story of India. So um, for us to be strong, India needs to be stronger. And we are more than willing to give to India, more than willing to share our um, uh, good fortune with India. That's where the one rupee 29 paise story comes from. Yeah. We give one rupee to the union, they give us back 29 paise. And in our state, when we have a disaster and we require something back from the government, that doesn't come. Even though we are sectorally capitals of automobile, electronics, textiles, EV today, and, and many, many sectors. Sectorally, we are capitals. We are also the talent capital, right? So the talent capital tag does not come easy. Everything else you could build over a few decades. But the talent capital tag comes from a century of work done by progressive Dravidian model regimes. And that is what key to Tamil Nadu's success today. And this, we are hoping that Delhi, whoever sits in Delhi, well, recognizes. the industry's minister, but what do industrialists have to say? Remember, Coimbatore has a huge bunch of uh, SMEs and that's what drives its economy, manufacturing, exports, etc. I caught up with a bunch of industrialists earlier in the day and asked them what issues concern them the most in these elections. We are here at Codicia Trade Fair Complex or the Coimbatore District Small Scale Industries Association Trade Fair Complex. It stands testimony to the entrepreneurial spirit of this city which is dominated by SMEs and with us a fascinating bunch of people who run some SMEs, uh, most of them past presidents of Codicia. This is actually India's second trade fair complex after Pragati Maidan, huh? Yeah, that's right. We've been the forerunner to, for the rest of the trade fair complexes in the country. Wow, fascinating. In terms of the SMEs and, and you know, you also are symbols of Coimbatore's residents. What is it that elections 2024 means to the SME sector, to, let's say, Kodishia, to industrialists and entrepreneurs here? We are expecting a lot from the uh, government for industrial support, especially for uh, exports and also women entrepreneurs. Uh, in comparison with the China, we need some special uh, discounts for the raw material and uh, so that uh, we can compete with them. Uh -huh. And it is the fastest growing uh, city okay. and we are waiting. When you see the larger national political landscape, is there some specific concerns that Coimbatore has? Let's say there are center state issues, there are other political divides that one, one sees and speaks about. How does that impact uh, the economy or let's say the local uh, realities of Coimbatore? Yeah, yeah, as Ilango said, the first point is airport. See, so we have uh, this airport supports to Coimbatore, Tirupur, E Road, Nilgiris, and all. From here, we do a lot of exports. So the first priority should be airport. And then uh, next is uh, rail connectivity, road connectivity, and all. And then we are expecting a logistics park in Coimbatore. This is the main concern which we are talking long for uh, this logistics park. So uh, these are all things which uh, both state and central should coordinate and then should bring it as soon as possible. We need better infrastructure, all facilities which uh, a large city has, we have to think about it. 
metro rail for example has been in the cards the dpr is ready we needed to kick start as soon as possible we need that uh, in a uh, speeded up so that connectivity suburbs grow one good thing about uh, coimbatore compared to a place like bangalore is suburbs have already grown organically okay. so if we can connect them they will thrive on its own and this city will be one of the finest planned cities in the country so i think i think the message i take is that you are expecting much better center state relations there is a worry about that that right that's that's absolutely see yeah, both it's you need two hands to clap and without the center and state we cannot do it and for us we are there gungo about the center's target on gdp growth and the state's uh, 1 trillion dollar economy so we want to play a part in it contribute to it so both of both the center and state will be benefited from coimbatore's contribution if they just join together okay i know i know i, I know not to ask industrialists to take political guesses because i don't think that's that's something you do but still given that there has been a lot of focus on the battle for coimbatore this time any guesses on who's going to make it eventually no, i'm not a political guy <laughs> <laughs> no, we leave it to the people of coimbatore to do it uh, uh, but it doesn't and matter for us it will we, we want the representative to uh, focus and support coimbatoreans that's what we want it can be anybody and we will support who was elected by the people of coimbatore to achieve whatever we said to, to okay, so the message is whoever wins, please support yeah, Coimbatore. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. message. We so, need a, we need a better representative from Coimbatore. Well, so the final question is, who is that anybody going to be who's going to support Coimbatore in what it's? a global aspiration remember this is a fascinating city has enormous potential and truly deserves world class infrastructure that's all we have time for on the southern view we'll come to you live from another location tomorrow thanks for watching the news continues here on ndtv